I just encountered this uh, uh, classification system by Jeffrey Gitmer again. Okay, it's one of again from one of his videos. <clears throat> there are, according to him, in in times such as this, there are only three kinds of people: watchers, whiners, and winners. Okay, pro W yun. Well, I agree. Okay. Basically, those are those are the three kinds of people you will ever meet. Okay, basically, not just uh, not just in these confusing times, but also in at any time, at any time of your life. Now, well, watchers. Okay, these are the people who would, um, who who had that uh, who have that wait and see mindset. Or just simply just want to watch and they go their merry way. Okay. The bad thing about being a watcher is, well, you can sometimes be uh, branded as as heartless, as um, what's called this in Tagalog in, in Filipino. Walang paki alam. Okay. It's okay to watch, but. You have to take action sometimes. Right at that moment. Now, the whiners, okay, they're the worst. Okay. They would sometimes watch, but they would whine at the same time. Okay. Now, personally, I would rather I would rather I would rather mingle with a watcher than a whiner. Okay? Because I don't deserve to hear his complaining all day. I don't deserve it. Okay? No one deserves to... As I was saying, I don't deserve, okay? I don't deserve to be with a with a whiner. Okay? I do not deserve to hear his, compla hear, uh, his or her complaining all day. Okay? Throwing one negative statement after another... I don't fucking deserve that. So, I would rather walk away from a whiner than be with one. And I've done that every single time. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the best kind of people you you should be with, okay, every, anyone should be with is are the winners. Okay. These are well, winners are results based. Are result are results based. Okay. These are the people who take action immediately and see results right away. It's a great learning experience when you're uh, when you know someone who is a winner, who has that winning mindset, because you too can become a winner. I say, well, a winning attitude is infectious. Okay, you learn a lot from winners. You become a winner yourself. Okay, just by um, modeling their winning mindset, their winning actions, their uh, basically everything that uh, that uh, tells everybody they're winners. So the next time, uh, the next time you see someone who's complaining, who's just watching or just taking action. Take a look at yourself in the mirror first and see which one of those three are you. Are you a watcher, a whiner, or the best, a winner? Okay. That's all. Those are those are those are, those are the three kinds of people you can uh, you can ever meet in your entire life. But being a watcher, a whiner, or a winner is a choice. Just decide on one and be that. A few days ago over at Instagram, I saw a post by Ariana Huffington where she um, post or she showed, uh, I think the front page of the New York Times that says 100,000 dead, something to that effect. And I saw, these are names, these are names. This is, these are probably the names of the deceased 
The names of the one, the one hundred thousand, the one hundred thousand who who died from the virus. I thought, is this ethically possible? Okay. Why would the New York Times do such a thing? Okay. Why would the New York Times do such a thing? I don't know. All right. For me, that's fear mongering. Okay. You're sensationalizing the dead. Okay. It's uh, it's already stressful for the deceased fa the deceased uh, the, the family of the deceased to publish <clears throat> to publish that name in an obituary. They have to pay you to publish it. And now and now you publish no you probably publish those same names uh, just to prove a point. I mean, the headline 100,000 dead is already enough. Tapos, i i ano nyo pa yung mga pangalan ng mga namatay. I still don't get it. Okay? It is ethically impossible. Right? The New York Times has overstepped its bounds. Okay? They have... They over they've, they've they've outdone themselves when it comes to uh, when it comes to sensationalizing news. Okay, they've they've outdone themselves this time. They have they sensationalize the dead, okay, just to tell everybody that that this disease is that dangerous. What the hell? Do you have to sensationalize the dead just to prove a point? Okay. I'm question. Well, I'm questioning the uh, the moral standards of the New York Times right now, and the and their ethical standards, uh, to be exact. Right? How far will the New York Times go from this point onwards to well, to to sensationalize the news? Okay. If it's not. If it's not stressful enough for those, uh, for the for uh, the people left behind by those deceased, by those deceased, I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to believe from now on any article that comes from the New York Times. I've had, I've had it with them.